this fact that we're opening this window to the universe and allow to look deeper and deeper is what really contributes to my motivation working in this field. The future is, is big. Every day is exciting to think that there could be this next big thing coming along. In addition to those exciting moments for discovery and detection, there are also a lot of challenges. Curiosity-driven research is what really leads to advance. Oh, this is a complete scam. It's the fun to do the tinkering and the ideas to build those metrology machines. But then in the end, it's the excitement to see that this large science comes out of it in the understanding of you know, the universe and our little place in it. Humans have been sitting around on Earth for you know, many, many thousands, millions of years. We've been looking up at the sky and all of the, the ways we've been looking at it have been using, you know, light in particular, because we could see, uh, and eventually radio waves and, and so on. And gravitational waves are not part of that spectrum. It's an entirely new spectrum. And this opened up the universe to observing all these things we couldn't see before. Now we have a different channel. There are a whole lot of new things we can do to understand the universe and the cosmos. The field is very exciting and we want to go after the big questions. We're definitely not shying away from the big questions. We're gunning for them. When we first detected first event, that's just one event. But now these days we have one event maybe every couple of days and that rate will keep increasing when the detector gets more and more sensitive in the future. So we need to make our pipelines, our analysis faster and more robust and more automated. It's not fully solved, but it's very exciting to work on those things towards the future. So it's three parts, the detection uh, with the gravitational wave telescopes, uh, the isolation uh, with the optical imaging telescopes, and then the detailed study with the follow-up facilities that use spectroscopy all those things need to be connected and you have to be quick. The ANU 2.3 meter, which we recently automatized uh, so that it could follow up these events uh, without human intervention. And that's really what's critical because it's the first few hours after the event where most of the interesting science is. The nice thing about working at CGA is that we really do have some cool technology here. So there's a lot of tools in our tool belt that we can bring to play to solve these problems. So the research we've done here in the manipulation of the quantum state of light has taken decades. So we started with squeezing light source and now that is now installed in the LIGO to improve the quantum noise performance of the LIGO machines. And at some point we're also able in this lab to get the squeezing down to the kilohertz where gravitational waves are operational. So that was a major breakthrough that was achieved here in this lab. So in this lab, it's a variety of precision experiments. We're really designing experiments that can probe the universe in multiple ways. One of those areas is sensing Earth's gravity. And from that, we can determine um, the distribution of Earth's water moving around the Earth. One of our exciting projects is our work on optical phased arrays. And this is where we combine multiple lasers together, which allows us to form one beam that we can really precisely control and maneuver around. This makes it really useful for communicating with satellites and also for maneuvering things like space junk. We're in the ANU's new uh, clean room facility. We've been contracted to make the new beam splitters for LIGO, but just the opportunity to uh, contribute hardware of, of, of this type, these like actual optics that are going to be used in LIGO um, uh, is, is an incredible feeling. What we are looking over here in this experiment is testing materials that are going to be used for next generation of future gravitational wave detectors. I think it's one of the things that keeps us experimentalists going, is that even though the goal may be ambitious and maybe a long way off. Along the way, we're developing technologies for other applications that have importance and that keep us going. We're always pushing the boundaries what currently 
is available. But we're pushing those boundaries because in the end, we want to have that science to understand the universe and then back on Earth what that actually all means. I would say this is just the starting point of gravitational wave astronomy. It's, it's not like we have detected that and that's it. That's just the beginning. We can go the whole way. So it can be an absolute probe of the very earliest universe. And uh, that's obviously a, a big goal of gravitational waves and their detections to get sensitive enough to, to really unlock the early universe.